Today I would like to talk about drawbacks of blockchain technology that impede its use in public and commercial services. Bandwidth, hard forks, enforcement and alteration of smart contracts, anonymity, digital identity, privacy, data integrity, scalability, and price volatility. Hi, my name is Alexey Konosevich. On the one hand, these issues do exist. On the other hand, they do not abstract the, the use of blockchain if properly addressed. When you understand this, you will be able to understand the concept of, of the blockchain estate registry that I previously discussed. And even more broadly, how to design applications on blockchain. So let's begin. Hard forks. The hard work is the major concern for open competition systems, blockchains. Because there are no authorities that impose and enforce one exclusive status quo. The system can be split into two or more branches or so-called forks, after which each branch becomes independent, but has a spare history of transactions till the moment of this hard fork. It happens because all nodes compete with each other by presenting um, the longest chain of blocks, which according to the initial protocol should be considered the valid chain and accepted by all nodes in the network. But nodes are independent and there is no authority in the network. Hence, anyone is free to overcome initial protocol rules because they run these nodes locally and they can do whatever they want with these nodes. So it's absolutely possible that one group of nodes will decide that one chain of blocks is valid. Another group can arbitrarily decide that another chain is valid. And so the network splits. As a result of the split, all assets, tokens in this network are duplicated. As a result of the forks, they can be managed independently, thereby creating legal collisions. For example, in one system, the user sells this land, but in the other, the user still owns it. For example, this kind of uh, hard fork with the duplicated all assets, all tokens in the network happened uh, in Ethereum in 2016, when the network, because of the DAO crisis split into Ethereum as we know it today and Ethereum Classic. I have video about it on the channel. You'll, you can find the link uh, to it in the description or in this or, or this corner. Is it possible to address this problem? Yes. I designed the solution which is called the cross blockchain protocol, which I will talk about uh, in in our next videos. In a nutshell, the answer is simple. When you have the same token in two networks, while you don't commit a transaction, it doesn't constitute a problem. It's like a Schrodinger's cat problem. When you decide to transfer the token in either network from this moment, you make your decision which token is actually the one that you want to represent your property right. Of course, nothing prevents you from using another token, but you made your choice and it is irrevocable. We just need a convention that we all understand the legal consequences of this choice the same way. So I designed this protocol. The next problem is immutability. Being an advantage of blockchain technology, the ledger's immutability can cause a lot of untoward use cases. For example, the loss of private keys will make cryptocurrency a token or a smart contract uncontrolled with ne negligible possibilities to restore access to it. Even if the blockchain can prevent many ownership disputes, the imperfect nature of people's relationships will always cause issues with ownership and the need to resolve them. 
In its pure design, the blockchain doesn't leave practical possibilities for altering transactions. And thus many people think that enforcing any legitimate judicial decision is impossible. It is important to notice though that transactions with cryptocurrency are indeed unenforceable. And there is nothing we can do with the transaction that has happened. Transactions in applications, though, such as transactions with tokens, are also irrevocable. But it is a misconception to think that you need to change something in history or alter history of transactions if some legal consequences changed. Instead, the application must be properly designed so the users are able to attach new transactions when, when they need to. So they don't change them, but refer to the latest transaction as the state uh, of affairs um, with their property rights. Because blockchain transactions have strict sequence and it's impossible to change the order of blocks. So the basic idea that we just need to use this unique feature of the system properly, we'll talk about it in the next videos. Next problem is anonymity. The authorization and authentication for a transaction are provided only with the relevant private key within the user's asymmetric pair. The concept of addresses is the cornerstone of the blockchain. In the result of a transaction, a coin is spanned from one address and added to another address. But to enable such transfer, the coin owner must use the relevant private key. Thus, the address is the only public record in the ledger that somehow identifies the user. Some research showed that addresses could be de-anonymized by digital fingerprints found in the network. IP addresses, some behavior patterns, and so on. The pure blockchain protocol is not suitable for keeping records on property and securities from government's perspective. Blockchain anonymity veils money laundering, financing terrorism and other unlawful activity. Beyond that, at the practical level, the blockchain's sensorless nature creates a confusion in identifying records. Anyone may perform any transaction and publish any data in the blockchain. If the government must authorize, for example, a land title deed on blockchain, how, how do you define this transaction, how you uh, identify who owns what. Without overlay solutions for digital identities and trust services, it's almost impossible to create any scalable governance model. So I would say that it's not a problem, but it's just a matter of proper design of a solution for digital identity. And once I discuss this problem on the example of Australia, uh, you will find the link to this video down below or this or this corner. I will also be recording another video for more technical uh, issues about the solution. The next problem is data integrity and privacy. And in blockchain, any published data is exposed and removal of this data is not an option, it is impossible. Alternatively, users can insert into the blockchain some cryptographic data, hashes, encrypted data. The blockchain that stores hash sums will provide two things. The user can verify the authenticity of the data, whether it is still the same or not. And timestamping, because blocks are chronologically stored. However, hashing does not ensure the protection of the data itself once it is stored off-chain. And if it's tampered with or deleted, the hash sum is useless for restoring. By the way, I have this discussion in some previous records 
So you will find the link to it down below. This leads to two possible solutions. Data will be stored by a trusted third party, for instance, a government agency, if we're talking about property registry, or users themselves. Today, all personal data and property records, title records, are stored in closed databases controlled by government, by government agencies. And publishing hashes, whether into the uh, centralized DLT or open blockchain does not add much security. To verify this data, the user needs access to that closed database or trust the entity that stores this data. Even if public blockchain is used to store hashes, there is still in this scheme a trusted third party as the source of truth. And so, concentrating many risks for leaks and corruption of data as a single point of failure. In the following videos, we shall try to find the solution for all this. The next problem is scalability. One exclusively chosen public blockchain for governance will necessarily create issues. The potential bandwidth of Bitcoin per year, for example, is roughly 220 million transactions. For instance, 300 public registries in Ukraine generate even more data than Bitcoin's bandwidth, year, year bandwidth, uh, which leaves no space for other cryptocurrency transfer at all. Just an example. Overload with the transactions um, creates the problem of high transaction fees and price volatility. Although Bitcoin is not the best in, in terms of bandwidth, it's still the most attractive in terms of security. This is not a workable solution on a scale even for one country with 40 million populations that I randomly chosen as an example. For blockchain using other consensus protocols or other data structure, scalability is not the main issue. For example, Ethereum and many other systems ensure better bandwidth and performance. The choice of one network in favor of others is a discussion about technological neutrality, the principle that is often discussed in public policy. You can find discussions that compare one specific blockchain network with some specific centralized system, for example, Bitcoin versus Visa. What is wrong with this uh, comparison is that they are trying to compare incomparable things. You see, in Visa, you don't get a definite transaction once you commit it. You can open your banking application right after an online purchase and you will not see it in the list of transactions. Sometimes it, it takes up to three days to settle your transaction down. And many transactions are literally resolved by system operators manually. Many people just don't know about it. Blockchain is different. It's peer-to-peer. -peer. No third parties. One hour and your transaction is settled. That's why it's completely different. But it still doesn't address the problem of scalability. Well, there is a principle of technological neutrality that I mentioned. And it is proposed to consider the problem of scalability from another perspective. One blockchain network does not necessarily provide enough scalability but what prevents us from using many blockchains? A bundle of blockchains may become much more effective. Like I previously said, I designed the cross-blockchain protocol that, among other issues, also addressed the, this issue. And the last problem, the price volatility. Due to speculations, the price can dramatically fluctuate therefore creating a bad user experience for those 
who need cryptocurrency to pay fees for publishing and managing data and running smart contracts. The mentioned scalability issues make it infeasible for the government to use or even announce their intention to use one specific blockchain exclusively. And again, the solution here is still the same. You need to use many blockchains. So users have a choice between these ledgers and there will be no problem of blockchain monopoly and high fees. I'm sure you have now even more questions than in the beginning, especially about that cross blockchain protocol that I mentioned. Well, stay tuned. In the upcoming videos, we'll discuss the solution. If by the time you're watching this video, I've already recorded it, you'll find the link to it down below. Meanwhile, hit like and subscribe. Thank you for your attention.